Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak adventure. We're coming to you from Waikiki Beach. I'm looking out my window right now at just beautiful, just the beauty of the Lord. I look out and I see uh, the, the shallower water over the reefs and then like three miles out it gets deep blue because it gets three miles deep. And I look out there like that, I think this is like the teaching of the Catholic Church. It's so broad, like the ocean, and it's unfathomably deep. And so we're so stoked today to have with us someone that's going to bring us some of the teaching of the Catholic Church. We have Jordan Burke with us, and we're going to be talking about uh, the Pope's Exorcist. We'll be right back. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Zoop up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm so glad to be here today. We're going to be talking with Jordan Burke about uh, Father Amorth's uh, book, The Pope's Exorcist. And, you know, I, I've been thinking, you know, I'm wearing blue, by the way, if you're watching me on my podcast, because Our, our Lady, you know, uh, uh, stepped, you know, basically defeated him by her, by her caveat of saying yes to the Lord. She, she stepped on his head. And the Bible calls Satan uh, the dragon the ancient dragon, the ancient enemy. But I was struck recently when I was reading uh, the Bible and it, and it called him the fleeing dragon. He's on the run because Jesus has already defeated him uh, at, at the cross. You know, uh, as a martial artist, I'm, I know we, we trained in, uh, in, in fighting to stage a fight. You know, you, you can, if you're knife fighting, if you give a, someone a certain target, uh, you kind of know that they're going to use that weapon and it's probably going to be striking the area of your body that you're leaving as a target. So you're more able to react and respond and defeat them. That's what Jesus did. He, def he staged a fight on Calvary. He staged the place, he staged the fight, and he used Satan's weapon against him. You know, I, I, I've, I've trained in knife fights, never really had a knife fight, but the fun thing about a knife fight is you know where the attack's going to come from, and you can use that to uh, that very weapon to destroy the enemy who's attacking you. And that's what Jesus did. He took Satan's weapon of death. Uh, he died, uh, destroying death and rising, restored our life. And so Jesus is... Jesus has defeated the enemy. He is our champion. And Jesus didn't say, I'm going to, uh, you know, when, he, when he, he refers to Satan, he says, if I by the finger of God, meaning the Holy Spirit, if I by the finger of God <laughs> cast out Satan, he's like a little, uh, a little bug, a little pest, uh, you know, um, that G Jesus has, uh, has defeated for us. But before, before we get started, um, uh, and, and I'm going to introduce Jordan, Jordan Burke. We're going to pray the prayer of St. Michael. Is that okay, Jordan? That's Jordan, great. Jordan is here. We'll pray this prayer, and uh, and then we will and then we'll get to know you a little bit before we talk more about this subject. Can uh, I have it in front of me? Can you? I'm sure you have it memorized. Uh, St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Us in battle. Be our protection Be against protection. the wickedness and snares, yes, of, the and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him. We humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince, of the, Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan, Satan and all evil spirits, all evil spirits who wander through the world Satan for the ruin and rule of souls. souls. And my wife always always prompts me to say the sign of the cross in Hawaiian. Makayanoa o kamakua kekeki ameke ohana hemalele. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. God bless our conversation. Jordan Burke. Um, can we know a little bit more about you first, uh, and and then we'll we'll dig into this area that God's given you Culiano over to to share this 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 heavy but life giving um, conversation about uh, exorcism. Your your uh, can you just I've got your story in front of me, but can you tell us a little bit about your story just to so yeah. we get to know you? Thank you. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So what's uh, I think the high level things you know we i was i converted in high school to catholicism um i kind of bounced around for a while with my father who uh was anglican you know he he was bouncing around a lot and i just kind of followed him because that's what a young man should do he should follow his father right so i followed him and eventually my dad came to the church and then he he didn't pressure me or anything but he's you know he just kind of explained things to me and i thought well 
logically, this makes sense. So I'm going to go ahead and go to RCIA and convert, and I did. Um, however, logic only takes you so far. <laughs> right? Well you, said, well you, said. Yeah, yeah. Amen. You have to have faith, you have to have love, and you have to have a true understanding and a true relationship with Christ, which I didn't have at the time. So uh, moving forward, I, I became a police officer. I was a police officer for a number of years in one of the most dangerous cities in the nation, constantly ranked in the top, uh, top 10 list, I think. I don't know if it still does, but it did at the time. And worked in project housing was my area where I was. So I'm constantly, you know, got shot at several times, fights, things of that nature. Um, and then I discerned, you know, I, this isn't this isn't for me anymore. There's a lot going on. I kind of read the writings on the walls. I had a little girl on the way and I thought, you know, I can't uh, I can't do this any longer. So I left. And in the midst of that, I was pulled into the Avila Foundation, where I currently work, which is spiritualdirection.com, uh, the High Calling Program, where we help form priests uh, and give support to priests, Avila Institute, where we have all sorts of classes from some of the greatest minds that the Catholic world knows, um, and then even my own apostle, which is Do the Harder Thing. It's all under that umbrella. I, I, that I, lo I, I love that uh, creed of yours. Do the Harder Thing? Do the Harder Thing. Yeah. 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 My mother yeah. wrote a little a little excerpt one of my dad in my dad's book she wrote a little a little thing and she used to say if you if you come to a fork in the road or you come to a decision and you're not sure which one to go choose the harder one yeah yeah because yeah, that even goes back to uh saint john of the cross actually which i didn't know mm. at the time when i named it but <laughs> I know it now. so um so yeah so so i i ended up falling away from the church for a little while and uh, through a, a tremendous amount of pain and hardship and personal issues and things of that nature, and my own addictions and sin and uh, all these different things, it brought me to my knees. And that's where God said, good, good. Okay, now come back to me. And so I did. I reverted in a huge way, and he's lit me on fire ever since. And uh, in terms of getting into this kind of world, uh, researching the occult and, and putting out information on it, definitely was not a choice. It was evident through uh, my own ministry. I started initially helping guys overcome pornography addiction. And then, you know, kind of how God does his thing. He says, great, you did what I wanted you to do. Now I want you to do this. Mm. <laughs> so I was like, mm. you sure, God? I don't, I'm, I'm not interested mm. in this. And uh, he made it very clear that I was, you know, I sometimes I feel like Jonah. I'm like, all right, I need, I need your strength, Lord. <laughs> well, you know, there's two, there's two things that you said that I think we should take should pause for a moment and just talk directly to people out there right now you reached uh, a point where you you just you're you bottomed out there's a yeah you, you know in surfing when you uh when you have a big wipeout sometimes you're just tumbled so much you don't know which way is up or down yeah. on a big wave you might be pushed down 10 15 20 feet um and hit the hit the bottom and 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 mm -hmm. in, in a lot of ways that's good because you know which way is up and right. you can push off from there. And it's not easy, but what you do is you, you push off and you swim towards the light. And when, yep. that, when, the, when the, you first break through, when you've been under for a minute or something, you first break through and you, you get that first breath of oxygen and you see the sun shining. It's like uh, almost, it's just like going to heaven for a moment. You know, everything is so bright and beautiful and you're, you're so glad that you're happy. And then for those men out there, I think especially who have been ashamed because of uh, pornography, that you can be liberated, you can be set free, and and God loves you. And remember that he who I forgive him much, Jesus says, loves me the most. And Amen. so don't 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 wallow in your shame. Come out into the light. Go to confession and uh, begin your begin your uh, and, and and that can ha you can return to the Lord in a heartbeat. It does. It's not a long ways back to get back to the Lord. Amen. Every little, every little Amen. decision you make, every little choice you make, in virtue, is immediate success because you're there. You're with the Lord. You're you're abiding in His will. Um, Jordan, how is it that you came then to this 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 harder thing uh, in this sure. area of deliverance, and spe specifically Father Gabriel Amorth, who is known as the Pope's Exorcist? By the way, there's a new movie out which I don't recommend you go see because uh, most movies about deliverance. Uh, like most movies about religion are just twisted and false. I wouldn't see that, but it has the same title. Uh, let's talk about the re the real father. It's ba it's supposedly bra based on Father a Amorth's life, but it isn't. It's twisting. It's twisted in a lot of ways. Let's talk about the the this new book that's out by Sophia uh, 
about Father Amorth and 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 take it away. Just we, actually, you know what? We can't let you take it away. We got to we got to go away for a, a message. Okay. <laughs> um, Jordan, how can they how can they find this book? Uh, Sophia Institute Press dot com, and they they can look it up. Pope's Exorcist. It's probably on the front page. It's but it's all there. Yeah, you know they're they're my publisher too. I love the people over there. They're the oh, best. Yeah. Every yeah. single one of them is so devoted to the Lord. They're just the best people. Uh, and where can they find you, Jordan? Um, primarily on Instagram, do the underscore harder thing. But I would say check out spiritualdirection.com, dot org. Uh, my high calling. If you're a guy out there who thinks you might have a calling to the priesthood, myhighcalling.com. We're associated with all of those. You're one of those people that has a, a underscore in his website. Yeah, unfortunately, you're it one of those this, rebels. Yeah, out of control. Someone, someone took the uh, the full name. I was really kind of bummed out, but you know, it is. It is Dude, what it you're, is. you're just <laughs> living on the wild side. We'll be yeah. right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. Now you can journey with other men on the adventure of a lifetime, growing in manly virtue. Through Bear's Man Cave community in our three-year school of manliness. Join at deepadventure.com. Better yet, you can lead your own sons through the same compelling video, audio, and written content. Can you imagine how much deeper your relationship with your dad could have been? And how much more you could have learned and pitfalls you might have avoided if your dad had a tool like this to help to draw you both into a deeper, life-changing discussion? Now you have a trigger that you can pull that will take you into gritty discussions with other men and with your sons at deepadventure.com. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. You can gain traction in the virtues in my book, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue, and you can be inspired by my personal testimony of heartache and triumph with my book, A Surfing Guide to the Soul, both newly published by Sophia and available at our web store, deepadventure.com and also on amazon.com. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha, welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We want to invite the men out there. You know, I, I, I used to have a cabin in Montana. When I first bought this land, it was undeveloped. There's no road. And I, I remember walking in for the first time to my land. At least I thought it was my land, but, but, but it wasn't. I, I saw a, a lone wolf on the other side of this, this meadow. And keep in mind, I'm two miles from Canada, two miles from, the Gla- from Glacier Park. I'm right on, on the North Fork of the Flathead River. And uh, I came to find out that the, the, it looked angry. It also kind of looked kind of gaunt. And uh, months later, I came across a tracker from the University of Montana, Missoula. And he was saying that he was track. He tracked certain wolves or mountain lions or grizzly bears. But he said, but that, I said, I, I talked to him about that wolf. He goes, yeah, I know that wolf. That's a lone wolf. That wolf is not part of a pack. It used to be an alpha male, but now it's alone. And wolves hunt in packs. So that means it's going to be undernourished and in time probably die of disease and die young. If you're a man and you think you're a tough guy and, you, and, you like, and you're proud of being a lone wolf, I, I feel bad for you. You're missing out so much on life, but plus, plus you're probably not spiritually as healthy as you could be and you're not, um, and, you're not uh, and in every way you're not being encouraged, you're not being challenged. And so we invite you to go to uh, our website, uh, deepadventure.com, it'll take you to the Bear School of Manliness. Join the Man Cave, it's our own private 
uh, non-Facebook community. Uh, and we have three years of curriculum, th 36 months of curriculum on manliness. And you join us. Uh, we have Zoom meetups once a month, and we go through it together. Uh, audio, video, written, all kinds of great things. And then what we really love is men. You can join, and your sons can get a login, not to the man cave, because they're too young to join with these other men. But you yourself can lead your sons through the school of manliness. So we need fathers um, to... Uh, we, you know you want to do this, but this gives you the, the, the tool to do it. We're talking with Jordan Burke. He's representing uh, uh, the writings of Father An uh, G Gabriel, um, I can't always pronounce his name, Am Armouth. Is that my saying? Um, right? Amorth. Yeah, Amorth. Gabriel Amorth. Okay, yeah. I didn't know. Uh, who is uh, known as the Pope's exorcist. Let's get into the nitty gritty of this book. What, what, tell us about it. Yeah, so the book is 101 questions about and from Father Gabriel Morth, and it's basically split up into three sections where it talks a little bit about who he was, and then the last two sections talk specifically about some of the things that he dealt with, uh, with the demonic, and then um, also with an exorcisms and what that kind of looks like. And it is, uh, I, I've read just about every book out there on these topics that I'm aware of anyway. And it, it, in my opinion, is one of the best ones. If anyone is listening and they're thinking, well, I don't know anything about this stuff, and I don't want sensationalism, and I right. don't want scary stories. And, and you I don't, don't want, want to, and you don't want to aggrandize Satan. Right. Exactly. He doesn't need any exactly. more attention than he, he already gets. But yeah, exactly. well, we need to be aware of our exactly. enemy. Yeah. Yeah. So this book is a fantastic option for those who are just looking to dive in with just the facts. What does the church teach? You know, and this is it. Mm hmm. Well, uh, tell us about who a uh, father. Okay, I'm tried it so many different ways. How do I say his name properly? Amorth. Amorth. Okay. Yeah. What was it? What was his relationship with with uh, Padre Pio, by the way? So I, I love this, and you, you notice I have Padre Pio. I have very strong devotion to him. He's he's behind me. If anyone can see the video, but um, he was so Padre Pio was his spiritual director. They were friends for 26 years, and then he became a spiritual director. Um, who, who, but then later Padre on, Pio, who, who was whose spiritual director? Oh, Padre Pio was Father Morth's spiritual okay, director. Okay, I wanted. Okay, good. All right. Right, right. And then later on, after that, after uh, Padre Pio passed, uh, Father Morth said famously that Padre Pio showed up in a lot of his exorcisms, as he still does today. He's he's very uh, prolific in helping liberate people. Praise God. He's a tough dude, man, Padre Pio. <laughs> I wouldn't yeah. want to mess with him. And so, tell us a little bit more about. I mean, uh, about his own. Uh, he, he when did he become uh when did he begin to do deliverances well, how so this is he? really fascinating yeah father morth he felt the call of the priesthood at 12 but he didn't become ordained until he was 32 and then he didn't become an exorcist until he was in his 60s so keep in mind that he died in 2016 at the age of 91 so from 60s to 91 is the amount of time that we're talking about where he kind of developed his information and knowledge on exorcisms and to his estimation, in the in that very short period of time, he performed over sixty thousand exorcisms. Some of those were um, the same person in yes. multiple, multiple yes. sessions, or perhaps. Yes. Um, but you know, back in those days, it was kind of in a way, uh, he he paved the way in helping define a lot uh, and, and developed a group uh, uh, that defined a lot of of what works and what doesn't work what is the exorcism and and what is the the um the counseling and stuff that needs to go along with it things like that can you tell us a yeah, little exactly. bit about a little bit about that sure yeah he he formed the international association of exorcists because he he saw that there was a need for this information to be shared so you can have for instance he was in rome but you may have exorcists in america as we do and let's say that the exorcists in america discover that hey the saint or the prayer the breastplate of St. Patrick is particularly efficacious. Well, how is he going to share that information with those who are also fighting the good fight in Rome? Right? So Father Morth saw a need to kind of bridge that gap. And that's why he created the IAE, as well as to help train exorcists in other ways, um, and to help them in their ministry. But that was that was his, one of his biggest goals was to help be able to spread this information in a field that is basically just he said you can't go to a class you have to learn it on, you, it, know, you, you gotta have a lab on. it's got to be on, in, a, yeah. in a lab setting you know it's interesting yeah. right now in my book i'm, I'm my new book uh where have all the cowboys gone? Twelve rules of manliness. I'm on page sixty-one, and right there, I'm talking about exorcism. It just so happens to be I'm doing my final write for my editor. We're just working on their edits. And what I'm saying is there is that a man needs to ride for the brand, and and I start making reference to the fact that um, 
you know, that authority is very important. That mm. being submitted, submissive to authority is very important. Apostolic succession is very important. And a lot of the, the non-Catholic ministers who, who will get involved in an exorcism, they know that it, it comes to a point uh, when, it's, when they're dealing with a real tough exorcism to go get a Catholic priest. Why is yep. that? It's because of apostolic authority. Tell us about exactly. that. Exactly. Exactly. Well, you've you've nailed it. I mean, you said it exactly. Apostolic succession, for those who are unaware, is basically saying that there is a direct lineage from the priest of today back to Jesus Christ, back to his apostles. And with that comes a level of authority. I mean, we can look at scripture. Uh, I, I wish I can remember what book it was in, but the, the Jewish exorcists, you're, you're probably familiar with this story, who go to perform an exorcism and they say, in the name of Jesus and in the name of Paul, and the demon yeah. looks at them and they say, Jesus, I know, Paul, I know, but who are you? And then they beat him and, up <laughs> and they beat him up. Yeah. yeah. And they leave stripped completely naked. And yeah, exactly. So that that implies that there's an authority structure here, which Father well, Ripperger famously has written a lot about. Well, you know, you think about it. Satan is a rebel and he right. hates authority. His right. kingdom isn't run by devotion and love. It's run by intimidation. If it's C.S. Lewis's book, The Screwtape Letters, does a great job of defining that. And so a rebellious spirit like that is, uh, is going to, ha- you know, contending is th- the whole point of it is, is um, rebellion against authority. And so that, ap- you know, think about it. Uh, every Catholic pretty much, you can say this, has been baptized by someone who was baptized by someone who was baptized all the way back to when Jesus baptized his disciples. There's like like the hands that have touched, that have touched, that have touched can go all the way back to Jesus. That's a powerful thing. What I've also heard, I just want to throw one more thing out, thing out before I take this break. I think it could have something to do with that. Uh, <clears throat> I've read that demons hate Latin. Mm-hmm. That's correct. Tell me about that. Yeah, so Latin is the universal language, the official language of the church. And so anything in that, so <laughs> there's a couple things there, but primarily just quickly, anything that the church officially holds a stance on or officially loves or, or, or uh, delegates to a particular level of authority, the demons just can't stand it. So exorcis- exorcists and exorcisms, or even in prayer, you might find it particularly efficacious where if you're struggling with prayer, you start praying Latin, if you know the Hail Mary in Latin, things of that nature. You'll you'll discover that you can focus a little bit better. <laughs> I'm sure there's some that's so interesting. Ways. Yeah, I don't I don't there's... know I don't know Latin. Although as an altar boy, I learned Latin, and then immediately sure. they changed it to English. But but uh, I know I like to listen. There's a an app that has Saint Pope John Paul II praying uh, the the Rosary in Latin, mm-hmm. and so I love mm-hmm. to just listen to that and follow along with that. That's beautiful. It's right. beautiful you know. Right. We're talking with Jordan Burke. I always get so excited and I forget to keep mentioning who we're talking to. Jordan Burke, what is your role again at Avala? Oh, gosh. I, I, I don't know an official role, a little bit of everything. <laughs> Just go Got check it. out the website and you'll see everything. And what is the yeah, website? What, we where can, is that where they can find you? What is the website? Yeah, so my personal website is dotheharderthing.com, but I would suggest spiritualdirection.com. You're going to find endless articles on everything that we do, video. We just put out a five-part series on prayer into the deep. And I think that's spiritualdirection.com slash prayer. Uh, totally free, high quality. Cardinal, I think it was Cardinal Studios filmed it for us. It's amazing stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it's all all out there. We're talking with Jordan Burke, uh, who's representing uh, a, a book uh, asked 100, is it 100 questions, 101 questions? 101, yeah. 101 yeah. questions about yeah. uh, Father uh, Gabriel a- 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 Amorth. A more. There you go. Yep. <laughs> I got it. Yep. Right. The Pope's Exorcist. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. This is Daniel LaBoon Markham with another episode of Country Up. Death. Some folks frequently walk through the valley of the shadow of death. And I suppose I've brushed death more than most and less than some others. At the tender age of 12, I pulled my cousin, aged 10, out of the cold water of the Columbia River. He was a goner. I wept. A year later, my pa, who had just turned 58, died from his third heart attack. I watched him heaving for air on his deathbed. That weren't pretty. Worked as a deckhand on the Columbia River Bar, the graveyard of the Pacific. The Grim Reaper had me in his crosshairs more than once. It was from the same waters as a young man I wrestled three bodies out of the pounding surf on Benson Beach. 
As a pastor, I was often called to folks on their deathbed. I learned to look forward to those times, strange as that may seem. As death comes close, folks get serious-like about themselves, their lives, and eternity. One such time was with an old farmer by the name of Bob Fredenberg. Now, Bob was a crusty old codger. Whenever he came to town, he was wearing that same pair of tattered and dirty coveralls, always with a servant of cow manure on at least one of his boots. Talk with a loud nasally twang, never a sentence lacking a cuss word or two. I was straight with Bob that day about death and eternity. Bob opened his heart to the Lord that day. As he did, Bob's demeanor in the room changed from the cold pallor of death to the glow of godly light. This is Daniel the Boone Markham at countryup.org on a journey a few miles this side of heaven. We invite our mama bears to join with us at deepadventure.com. You'll have access to all of the Long Ride Home TV shows even before they air on EWTN. Plus, three years of the shareable Ocean Sunrise daily catechism videos. Plus, at deepadventure.com, a 20% discount at our online store with all of our great t-shirts and clothes and books and rosaries and medals and all kinds of accessories. You'll also get an autographed copy of Bear's latest book, and for a limited time, a Catholic biker stuffed teddy bear. All at deepadventure.com. Come on, Mama Bears, let's hear you roar. Did you know that each Saturday morning you can receive the shareable YouTube video version of the Bear Wozniak Adventure in our inspiring weekly newsletter, even before it airs on the radio or hits the podcast apps? Never miss another episode. You can even binge watch Bear's inspiring guests. Think about the impact you can have sharing these videos with your friends. Go to deepadventure.com and click the subscribe button. Be the kind of man that when he gets out of bed in the morning, the devil says, oh no, he's up. Go to deepadventure.com and invite Bear to speak. Aloha, this is Bear Wozniak. Uh, we have with us as our guest today, Jordan Burke, who's representing the book, a uh, new book by Sophie Institute on the life of Father Gabriel a Amorth, who is known as the Pope's Exorcist. There's a new movie out. Uh, which we highly recommend you don't go see. Uh, kind of twist the the story of, of Father Amorth, but Amorth. But uh, we're going to be exploring more about the reality of of uh, of, of demonic uh, oppression and, and possession, and, and how the Catholic Church deals with that. When I went to when I went to school, uh, I, w I went to uh, a Baptist university, by the way, uh, but I was a, a Catholic. And, uh, at the time, but I took an Old Testament survey class, and the professor sent out a little, a little uh, wanted to know. He by a show of hands, I think he did it. How many of you believe that there's a Satan? That they believe that there's a that there is a person called Satan? How many believe there's demons? And he said three years ago when he asked that question, hardly anybody raised their hands. But now since this movie, The Exorcist, came out. He, uh, it was like most people did. And, you know, I, that's a movie I've never seen. I'll never see that. I never see horror movies. I think it plants bad things in your mind. But, but that, that show did show, did uh, have a, end up being turned to the good by the Lord because people are getting to realize I have an enemy and he hates me and has a terrible plan for my life. Right, right. Well, not only that, you know, the Catechism of the Council of Trent makes that painfully clear. If you read that they have a section called the audacity of demons and it says mm. with them there can be no peace and no truce their hatred of us is relentless and everlasting well not everlasting but until we die <laughs> we're going to be engaged in battle with them but it was around that time that father began to do when, his ministry began when in the 60s you said when he when he was in uh, uh, at the age of 60 years old yeah okay so sometime i forget what year that would be but it was it, it there was this there was this increased awareness suddenly right so how did he begin to, to uh how did that begin to happen and the, and then uh explain to us really what an extra what the process of being discerned that someone needs this and how that all, all works in in sure, two, sure. in three sentences or less Sure. So <laughs> the way he was brought into it, 
was basically there was a need and the, his superior saw that he fit the requirements, which is, you know, basically piety of good standing of good of goodwill, um, things of that nature. I'm not remembering the words exactly what is uh, listed by the church. But in terms of those who are seeking an exorcism, there is a process in which they have to go through where they're evalu or evaluated by different experts, including a psychologist to help them navigate whether or not they're actually possessed. If it is deemed that they potentially are, then they'll go and see an exorcist. So it's, it's a process. Just oh, yeah. because someone acts out or thinks they're possessed doesn't mean they may have some other uh, psychological issues. But isn't there, and I forget the name of that medical book that the psychologists use, isn't there a formal diagnosis there for, for, um, for demonic uh, possession? Yeah, so here's what's interesting. So my my, uh, my girlfriend is actually a, a licensed psychologist, and we've talked about this because we've heard about this a couple of times. So the, the book you're referring to is the DSM. Yes. And there's a rumor going around that there is an official title for uh, possession in the DSM, and it's just not true. Mm. They reference it under disasso disassociative identity disorder, but they reference it in such a way that basically says... Yeah, some cultures believe this, but it's not really. It's mm. it's a result of something else. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So so then once that there's a discernment that there actually is a deliverance. What I think is interesting is, is that um, it's not like okay, someone's having a big event right here and now we're going to cast the demon out. Um, you can father father schedules the deliverance. <laughs> <laughs> it's right. like, right. okay, dude, high noon tomorrow, be ready. You know, to, you know the demons even have this notice, notice it's going down, dude, you better get ready. So I think that's so interesting, the power of God. But then what happens then? Uh, he then, then the exorcist then meets with this person for a, a few occasions to, to discern more and... Yeah. Yeah. Basically, depending on the case, every case is going to be different, but a lot of them will share a lot of the same similarities, but they're going to meet with the exorcist and the exorcist is going to ask them questions and there's going to be a lot of prayer and discernment as to whether or not uh, what is going on is what it appears to be because the enemy is a liar and he's going to try to manipulate things and make, you know, make you look in one direction when in fact he's hiding somewhere else. Yes. Um, so it's a lot of discernment, a lot of prayer. And then uh, once they can kind of narrow things down, there is the uh, the actual formal rite, the solemn rite of exorcism, um, which is a particular set of prayers that are only permitted to be said by exorcists who are appointed by bishops who have uh, also approved the case. So there's even another step of uh, kind of red tape, but good red tape, if that makes sense. Yes, amen, absolutely, yeah. Well, it's just interesting. I, I know Father had this, I believe he, 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 he normally would thumb his nose at the very beginning of yeah. an exorcism. <laughs> what, what was that about? It's true, he, right? He, yeah, he did. He, he, he writes often that he was a jokester. And even to the point, this will give you kind of some framework of the joy that he had interiorly as someone asked him, well, are you, you know, his very first exorcism, he came in contact with, with Satan himself. I said, well, are you afraid of Satan? And he goes, no, no. When Satan sees me, he poops his pants. You know, this is, <laughs> <laughs> this is the way that he approached. And it wasn't flippant by any means, but it was just this understanding of Jesus is Lord. Jesus is the king conqueror, right? And as you said so rightly, Mary crushes the head of Satan. So what fear should he have? And, and his answer would be none. You know, it's, that, that's you know, that is biblical because I think it was in when Elijah was challenging the priests and prophets of Baal and they were calling on their, their, their demonic gods to right. send fire. There's a line where he says, uh, where is your God? You know, has he gone aside? But the literal translation is, has he gone to take a... Yeah. <laughs> you, know, you know what? Yeah. So, yeah, yeah I, 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 and also I think it kind of sets other pe the people there at ease, too, to some extent, mm -hmm. too. Uh, because mm -hmm. usually in an exorcism, aren't there prayer warriors around him? I, I'm not sure if that's... Yes. It, yeah. Yeah, so that's one of the ways that uh, I came to know more about this. Actually, both of my parents, after we were out of the house, because that's an important note, but because uh, no parent, no no couple. So married couples, let me back up. Married couples have a particularly uh, efficacious nature if they're living a truly sacramental marriage. And so what will happen is sometimes they will be brought in to help uh, and pray intercessory no prayers kid, for the priest. Wow. The priest. Yeah. During so the exorcism. My, during the exorcism. During the exorcism. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I, so, so for instance, my dad, I know for uh, at least on his side, has assisted in 24, I think, uh, full solemn rite exorcisms. Um, and uh, yeah, and he all he was there to do was was to pray and help assist in any way that the exorcist told him to. Right. If if someone is listening to this and they're and they're under and they feel they're under some demonic oppression, the first thing you need to do is go to a priest. I'll, I'll tell you what, Jordan. About 
I'm just so tickled about this. About two weeks ago, I had eye surgery. Hmm. I had like bad focus, and I had this blurry cataract situation. And now suddenly I can see how bright and beautiful the world is and how crisp and clear the world is. And, I, and, and so an exorcism, it, it, it's, it's otherworldly. It's, it's, it's pretty gnarly. But that person totally has a whole new life, a whole new identity. Uh, and it's so, so joyful. And, and, uh, and there's just this, 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 suddenly they're free, suddenly they're lighter than air, suddenly they, they see with clarity and it brings things into perspective. But after an exorcism, don't they take that person then through a, 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 a series of counseling to help them kind of... Yeah, yes, depending on the case and depending on what's necessary. Aftercare is extraordinarily important um, because it's not just a, like, okay, we're done, you're free, go, go and be you know, the new you. It's, okay, let's, let's make sure you're hooked up with the spiritual director. Let's make sure that your prayer life is in order. Let's make sure that you have what you need to continue to remain free. You can avoid these different things. So yeah, that is, aftercare is very important. And 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 you know, it, Jesus even said, talked about how we cast out a demon and and you sweep the house clean, and then it'll if you don't fill it with something, if yes. you don't fill it, be filled with the Holy Spirit, then the demon will come back and make it worse off than it ever was. So there's this this. Yes. So it's all Christocentric. It's all about Jesus. It's all about. Amen. And you know, I've I've had a couple of occasions where leading people to Christ and uh, and mm, this spontaneous deliverance kind of takes place in front of me. Um, and it's not like it's a big thing like what these are, but it's almost like the name of Jesus is like a cattle prod. It's just, you know, there's just this like yikes, and there's this shout, and there's this whatever this weird stuff that happens, and then that person is free, and they know it, and they go tell their friends, and they say Jesus, they know it's Jesus who's liberated them. Yeah, well, and even the exorcists will tell you it's not what they're doing. It's yes. all through the grace of Jesus, all of it. And what is it? The name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. And that includes the demons. And that's right. one of the reasons why it pains them. So everything is, even the deliverance prayers that we're permitted to pray over ourselves or over those who have mm -hmm. we have proper authority over, it's all in the name of Jesus, not in the name of Jordan, not in the name of Bear, in the name of Jesus. When we get back, well, I want to talk to you about this efficaciousness you said of married couples. We're talking sure. with Jordan Brooke. Man, I love you, dude. You just, just <laughs> love, love being with you. I wish I could just hang out with you. So tell me, uh, how can people find you again? Uh, do the harder thing dot com, spiritual direction dot com, Instagram, do the harder thing. You'll find it. It's, it's all there. And so, do the harder thing. Actually, people go, yeah, I think I want to click on that. And I want to yeah. go to the. Oh, yeah. I yeah. want to go to the do the not quite so hard thing. Yeah, <laughs> you'd be surprised. <laughs> <laughs> no, I actually do think men especially want to be challenged and they want to rise yeah. up. And so, the, go go to Jordan's website, and we'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. People love our EWTN TV show, Long Ride Home with Bear Wozniak. Thanks to you, the show has won four different tally awards. And now, instead of waiting each week for the next episode to air, you can actually binge watch our show and even share it with your friends when you go to deepadventure.com and join the Mama Bears or the Man Cave. Along with all the other benefits, you get total access to all the seasons of our aired episodes, plus instant access to episodes that won't even air for several months. Long Ride Home with Bear Wastick, a great way to communicate the gospel in a gritty enough way that even tough men will stop and watch at deepadventure.com. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wastick adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to NotreDameFCU.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. When you go to the Bear Wasik Deep Adventure YouTube channel, you get access to all of our free playlists, including hundreds of episodes of the Bear Wasik Adventure, plus the three-year journey through the whole catechism in our Ocean Sunrise Catechism series. And you even get short clips and live streaming of Bear and Cindy's Adventures in Paradise videos. Go to YouTube and subscribe to the Bear Wasik Deep Adventure channel.
still listening? I thought we warned you to change to an easy listening station. Well, you asked for it. Here is more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Aloha, this is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I want to invite you to go to our website, deepadventure.com, subscribe to our newsletter, and if you do, you get our uh, weekly Saturday morning, early Saturday morning email that has the video version of our radio show that airs on EWTN that night and uh, a lot of other good stuff. And uh, so you can go there and subscribe. And also you can go to our YouTube channel, Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure, and you can become a member there. And uh, we've got 13, actually I think we have 1,900 videos there. Uh, we have about 250 teachings on the catechism where I'm down at the beach and I'm teaching about 15 minutes a day. And we go all the way through. And so that's there. And then all of these radio shows are there. And uh, if you join, uh, if you become a member of that channel or of our, of our website, then you get all 34 episodes of Long Ride Home. And guess what? Twelve of those haven't even been aired by EWTN yet. We're releasing. We're in the process of doing our final edits for them now. So you get the director's cut too. You get the full cut. So, uh, yeah, go, ch just please go and uh, if you're interested, and go to our channel and uh, our YouTube and our and our website, DeepAdventure.com. Hey, um, we got with us today Jordan Burke. He's representing a, a book about the life of a father, Gabriel Amorth, who is uh, referred to as the Pope's exorcist. I love what you were saying. I, I never had heard this before, that there's a certain efficaciousness with a mother and with a husband and a wife. And can you talk about that in terms of what a husband and wife can do in their own home uh, in protecting their, their family and God's authority in their family? Yes, you, you've touched on something that is very near and dear to my heart. So parents, please, please, please listen. You have authority, spiritual authority. We're talking about natural law. We're talking about what God has set in place, Aquinas, all these things um, over your family, your immediate family, and especially your children, right? What does that mean? That means that you as a parent can pray particular prayers over your child and you can, you can pray command prayers over your child, not commanding them to go do their chores because that may not work out too well. But if they're suffering any sort of demonic influence, attack, things of that nature, you are their caretakers. You're, you're there to care for them and love them. And so God equips you with these things, with the authority that you have over them, to be able to fulfill that to, to, uh, to the greatest effect that God permits. So it's a, it's a beautiful thing. And if you're living a healthy sacramental life, if you're, you're frequent confession and frequent Eucharist and all these things, you're, you're just going to see great graces flow from stepping into the fold and uh, protecting your family in the way that you're called to. You know, it, one of the greatest, one of the worst things that I happened, I guess, during the whole COVID thing is the lack of holy water. You couldn't mm. cross yourself and uh, people couldn't bring it into their home. What do you, what, you know, I suggest people go to the, go to the church and if it's not there, ask for it. And, yeah. and bring holy water into your home and anoint your men, anoint your wife, husband's wife, anoint your children, anoint every doorway. I, I sprinkle yes. it all over my house uh, frequently. Why is holy water so pow powerful? Because it, because it was ordained by God. And also it represents the authority, the God-given authority of the Catholic Church. Authority is so important when it comes to the demonic realm. Think about who is the person that Jesus said had more faith than anyone in all of Israel? It wasn't even Jew a Jewish guy, it was a Roman centurion. When he asked Jesus, come and heal my servant, and he said, it's not necessary that you come under my roof to heal my servant. Only speak, speak the word and my servant will be healed, for I am a man under authority, having servants under me. And I say to one, go do this, another one, go do that, and they do it. So the key to, um, to leadership in a home for a man is to be under authority, be under the church's authority. And for the woman to be under that mantle of protection of her husband too. And then there's a certain oneness that makes demons flee. But uh, but uh, go into your home. I, I, I go in and I just, you know, I would discern now with iPhones and everything like that, go in and discern each room, pray over it, bless it, use holy water. I kind of got off, off on a tangent, sorry, Jordan. No, I, I completely agree. Listen, we, we brought a c literal cart full of gallons of water on uh, the Feast of the Epiphany and had the priest turn all of them into Epiphany. We store it up. We keep it. <laughs> you, never, you never know when you're going to need it. So That's so cool. You know, I'm thinking my wife and I are going to go sailing in the British Virgin Islands here in a couple weeks. 
and uh, you know they have water makers on board. Water's important, and mm-hmm. living water, the water of the Holy Spirit. Think about how that that's. I mean, water on a boat. If you're doing a long crossing, that's pretty important. And this is a we're all in the boat of Peter, right? Uh, but that living water, that that holy water, is very important. What else do, uh, do you want to share with us in, in, in the last in these last five minutes or so? Well, you know, I think when people generally talk about these topics, there's one of two reactions. There's one that kind of blows it off, and that's fairly normative and understandable. But there's one that I think is actually particularly more dangerous in a way, and I, mm-hmm. I could be wrong on that, but it's to give it more power than it's Absolutely. due and to yeah. be afraid. And I just can't reiterate enough. I mean, God has done, he is a good father and he's given you everything that you need Mm -hmm. possible. As you're talking about the sacramentals, holy water, blessed metals, all these other different things. You have it, or if you don't have it, you can get it. And most churches give it away for free anyway, Mm -hmm. Yeah. so that you can be safe, so that you can be protected. You don't have to fear. You should be aware. You should definitely be aware, but you don't need to fear. And you also, you know, in, and we talked about this earlier, is you don't need to hyper focus on the enemy. Exactly. That gives, you know, that gives them way too much attention. You know, that's exactly. one of the reasons why they act out during the deliverance is because they just love the attention, you know, and they act big and scary. But but we don't want to give them more more uh, attention than they're due. But you know, those. But then the other, the first thing you said was to just to be aware that this is this is demons, you know, are around you. And you know, I think some people are like toddlers in the middle of bare root during a during a battle you know they're walking through the middle of a battlefield in no man's land bullets and grenades and everything are going off and they're clueless of the spiritual battle if god could just open your eyes up a little bit you would see your guardian angel but you would see here and there oh there's a demon lurking there's a demon lurking and there's certain people you wouldn't be hanging around there's certain places you wouldn't go there's certain places on the internet you wouldn't go um because the spiritual realm is real well what else do you want to tell us no, I love that. I absolutely love that. Yeah, and you and you can. It's important to note too. You can't pretend that it's not there. And whether or not you see it, it's there. It's real. You know, I heard an exorcist recently say that demons are uh, lawyers from hell, and they're legalists. And mm-hmm, so, mm-hmm. whether or not you intend to not see them, or you whether or not your intent is to not be harmed, <laughs> doesn't necessarily matter. You know, you have to be aware and you have to be prepared and you have to. Uh, utilize what God has given us to, to fight back. We are the church militant. So. That's very true. And I know in, a, in, a, in exorcism, um, often in exorcism, the first demons that are, are come out are minor demons. And they, you, know, you right. think, okay, I've, I've cleaned house, but there's that bigger demon that's saying, you go, you go. He's kind of throwing them to the fodder. But usually where there's a demonic uh, a realm in someone's life, it, it's, it's it, they, they legally are there because there's something has happened. Like sometimes people say, well, I'll never have a child or I'll never get married or I'll never um, this or I'll never that. That little never, never, never is maybe if you're making a vow saying uh, of, of celibacy perhaps in the in the lord that's one thing but to say a never is saying this part of my life i've carved out and god can't have it yep that's well exactly then, then, right. if, then who's going to take that place or if yeah. you've fallen into uh pornography is is, mm-hmm. is a deep vile pit and and it fills it fills with mm-hmm. demons um um also just holding bitterness Yep. You know, if someone's hurt you, and then to make com- compound it, then there's this there's this little fortress of pain that you live in. A, you know that sweet self self pity. My mom used to call that. Tell tell us about that. I've got <laughs> you touched on something so 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 important, especially in our times, because I've seen some articles coming out from from theologians who I'm sure I'm sure that they meant good. Uh, however, it's some of the things that they said that you don't have to forgive somebody unless they actually. Uh, show that they want to be forgiven or whatever the nonsense argument is. You talk to any exorcist. One of the strongest strongholds, strongest strongholds, that's interesting language, one of the biggest strongholds yeah. Yeah. that the enemy has on you is unforgiveness. So what you said was so key. If you're harboring unforgiveness, the, that's, that is prime rich soil for the enemy to, to, to wallow in. And to you, know what? I, you know what? Here's a thought. Uh, I was pedaling my bicycle across the United States in the desert of Arizona at about midnight because it was so hot. I was right pedaling that night, going through a really tough time in my life. And there kind of comes to a place of brokenness when you're physically exhausted. And at some point there, I said, I said, God, I forgive you. Hmm. All this that had happened to me, oh, poor me. When you hold on forgiveness against someone else, that you're really holding that against the Lord. You're saying, this is unfair, Lord. This shouldn't have happened to me. You've do- you got it wrong. And so, um, and so, also, just it's okay, everyone, to say to God, "I forgive you. 
I know that all that is all that is you're able to turn to the good and you and you and you intend for my good but let go of your your stranglehold on the Lord and, and, and his beautiful will for your life can you pray for us we got just a few seconds pray up can you just pray a blessing for those who, who yeah. yeah thank you with the Father Son and Holy Spirit Lord thank you for this time please bless those who listened everyone involved in this broadcast and uh, please help us to serve you better Amen. Mm-hmm. that was a fast one <laughs> I didn't and know how much time we had. Yeah, that was good. Hey, Jor- <laughs> hey Jordan. No, but that's, that's efficacious, right? Jordan, uh, how can people find you and more about the, this book? Yeah, uh, do the harder thing.com, do the harder thing on Instagram, spiritual direction.com, My High Calling, Avila Foundation, all of those websites. Make sure to pick up the book, Pope's Exorcist at Sophia Institute Press. And, and uh, don't yeah, go to all. the movie. And don't go to the movie. That's a distortion. Agreed. Yeah. A huge agree. Yeah, yeah. Go go to Sophia and get the book, The Pope's Exorcist. Thank you everyone for joining us. Pray for us. Pray for Jordan, for God's protection for him and his family. Until next week, may the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Aloha. Thanks for listening to the Bear Wasting Adventure. Find more manly conversation at the Bear Wasting Deep Adventure YouTube channel. Subscribe and ring the bell.